this week on The Wire. Credit ratings boost economy. 97% of regions are growing and vacancy rates are still falling. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening this week in real estate, finance, investment and more. So let's kick it off with our top story for this week. Credit rating boosts economy. So the federal government and commercial banks will be able to keep borrowing cheaply in international credit markets after S&P Global Ratings revised the government's AAA rating to stable and removed it from a potential downgrade list. Now, the world's biggest credit rating agency gave a vote of confidence to Australia's strong economic rebound and suppression of the pandemic. Australia is now one of only nine countries to hold a AAA credit rating from all three of the major rating agencies. Now, the S&P upgrade of Australia's sovereign AAA rating to stable from negative provides an opportunity for the nation to emerge from the, uh, from the pandemic, I should say, stronger than most. Now, after the sharpest economic contraction since the Great Depression, followed by the biggest fiscal, fiscal expansion in the nation's history, Australia is among uh, the world's most creditworthy nations. Now, guys, moving on to our next story. 97% of regions are growing. So a handful of neighbourhoods have missed Australia's soaring house prices, with just 11 areas across the country recording price falls in recent months, most of them remote rural areas. Now, Australian median property value jumped 7% over the past three months, the latest core logic figures show, with the biggest gains seen in Sydney at 9.3%, Darwin 7.9% and Hobart 7.7%. But price, price growth, I should say, wasn't limited to cities with an increase in property values recorded across 97% of the regions analysed by CoreLogic. And only 11 locations saw prices dip over the past three months, some of which recorded only a marginal fall after pre, previous rises. Now, CoreLogic's Eliza Owen says it's rare to see so many markets in an asynchronised upswing. She says the few markets that have seen a fall in dwelling values in the three months to May are in more remote locations across regional Australia. They include the West Pilbara region, Pilbara region in WA and the Darling Downs and Maranoa region in Queensland. Now guys, moving on to our final story of the week. Vacancy rates still falling. So renters in Australia's biggest cities could find it hard to get a good deal with the number of empty properties falling, but some neighbourhoods still offer tenants more choice. Now fewer than two in every 100 rental properties, that's only 1.7% nationwide, are empty and that's the latest data from Domain Shows. But vacancy rates are higher in Sydney and Melbourne. Now, vacancy rates in all the capital cities fell or held steady last month, says domain analyst Nicola Powell, with extraordinary tight conditions in the smaller capitals making it harder for tenants to secure a good deal and pushing the national vacancy rate to the lowest level since February 2020. Now, vacancy rates in Brisbane, 1.3%, Adelaide, 0.6%, and Darwin, 0.5%, are at their lowest level since the domain data series began in 2017, while Canberra and Perth, both at 0.8%, are close to multi-year lows. Now, tenants in Melbourne and Sydney have a greater choice when it comes to finding a rental, with 3.8% and 2.7% of properties left vacant in May. Well, guys, they are the top stories happening this week. Now, please don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and follow or subscribe wherever you are seeing this. Have a great week, guys, and remember, it's only one thing in life that makes a difference. That is action. Thanks a lot, and bye for now.